Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at composite functions, so we can answer questions from exercise 2c. So what does it mean to have a composite function? It means to have one function evaluated followed by another function after that. So you're substituting one function's output into another function's output. And the way that this works is that if you're applying the g function first, then you would substitute x into your g function, could be squaring, could be adding 3, and then you take this value and you substitute it into the f function. And this is how it would look, but typically we remove one of the outer pair of brackets to just leave us with f g of x. So when you read f g of x, it's actually the g function that acts first and the f function that acts second, you actually read from right to left, starting from your x value effectively, working your way outwards from right to left. And that's the classic mistake that people make. When combining functions, the order matters, so you ensure you combine them correctly. If you want the f function to act first, then it would look like this, g f of x. So let's have a look at a couple of questions then. We've got that our first function f of x is x squared and g of x is x plus 1. And we are asked to find f g of x, g f of x. So it's sometimes nice to think of the function as squaring the value and adding 1 on to the value of x. So not just to think of it algebraically, but to think about what is happening to any numbers that re get replaced with x. We square this value or we add 1 to this value. So finding f of g first means that g acts first. So we replace effectively the g of x with x plus 1. So from this line to this line, we've effectively just applied the g function to the value x. When we apply the g function of adding 1 to x, we get x plus 1. So that's why the x inside the bracket has turned into x plus 1. It's just, been, it's just had the g function applied to it. Now, with this x plus 1, we've now got to apply the f function, and the f function squares different values. So we need to square this x plus 1 value. In brackets, remember, x plus 1 all squared. And we can expand this if we want to, to fg of x equals x squared plus 2x plus 1. Now let's do it the other way around, and what we need to do first is we need to first apply the f function of squaring the value inside the bracket. So in this case, it's g of x squared. The x gets turned into an x squared because the function um, defined as f squares things. Now we need to apply the g function onto whatever's in the bracket. The g function adds 1 to whatever's in the bracket. So it's just going to be x squared plus 1. Simplifying this to x squared plus 1. Okay, another slightly trickier question here then. So in this case, it's going to be f of x equals 3x plus 2. g of x is going to be x squared plus 4. And we're going to be asked a series of questions to do with this. So the first function takes whatever value we have in the x bracket, times it by 3, and adds 2 onto it. The g function squares our value and then adds 4. So finding the function for g f g of x means that we do g first, because that's nearest to x, and then f second. So doing g first. g squares the value inside the bracket and adds on 4. So if we've got x inside the bracket, it becomes x squared plus 4 inside the bracket. Now we apply the f function, and the f function takes whatever we've got inside the bracket, triples it, and then adds 2. So take whatever you've got in the bracket, in this case it's x squared plus 4, we'll times it by 3 and add on 2. So you can effectively see here that x squared plus 4 has kind of jumped in where x is in both of these positions here. So your answer if we expand brackets as well is 3x squared plus 12 plus 2 at the end, so 3x squared plus 14. Let's do it the other way around now, g f of x. So we first apply the f function first, and this is to triple our value inside the bracket and add on 2. So x turns into 3x plus 2. Now we apply the g function of squaring this value and adding on 4. 
So effectively what we've got in the bracket now is 3x plus 2. So we need to substitute that into the x value in x squared. So 3x plus 2 all squared plus the 4. This will simplify to expand your brackets and simplify. We get 9x squared plus 12x plus 8. Let's have a go at f to the power of 2. Now, that's, this doesn't mean f function squared. If it meant to square the function, it would be notated like this, with the full brackets around it and it being squared. In this case, it means do the f function first and then do the f function again. So in this case here, we have to do the f function once, which is to triple our value inside the bracket and add on 2, which is what we've got here. And now we have to do it again. So effectively in our function here, both of the x values are going to be replaced by 3x plus 2. Effectively, we're taking whatever's inside the bracket, tripling it, and adding on 2. So in this case here, we're going to get 3 times the value inside the bracket, which is 3x plus 2, plus 2 on the end. So in this case here, we're going to get 9x plus 6 plus 2. That's 9x plus 8. The final question, part D here, is find the value of b such that fg of b equals 62. Well, we've done a lot of the work already. We know that this function up here is f of g of x. So all that it asks for us to do now is just replace the x value with b. So we'll replace that in there. So 3b squared um, plus 14 equals 62. Let's rearrange this to work out the different values of b. So b could be plus or minus 4. Make sure that you're still applying the rule that if you're inversing a square, you get a positive and negative value. Okay, final question that we're going to go through here. The this function here is um, 2x minus 8, all modulus, and this one here is x plus 1, all divided by 2. And the question here is find f g of 3. Well, the best thing to do for this first question here is to just put 3 into the g function first, put the answer then into the f function second. So substituting the x equals 3 value into g first, the reason being is that g is closer to 3 than f is, so we get 2. And once we've got the answer for 2, we then plug 2 into the answer for f, or into the function f. To get the answer, we get minus 4 inside a modulus here, so we need to make that positive, so we make it 4. So f g of 3 is equal to 4. The next function, next thing we need to do here is to make the function f g of x and solve this and set it equal to x. So let's make the left hand side function first. We need to take the g of x function and apply it into the x positions in the modulus, uh, into the f function. So effectively here we're going to replace x plus 1 over 2 with the x value inside the f function. So we're going to get 2 brackets x plus 1 over 2 minus 8. Luckily here the 2's cancel out here. So we get the modulus of x plus 1 minus 8. So that would be modulus x minus 7. So now we've got uh, a nice simplified version of f g of x. This is now just x minus 7 and we need to find the solution that equals modulus x. So in this case here, draw the graph as we've seen in the previous video, I think it's about three videos ago. Draw both of the graphs, so draw x minus 7 first, reflect the bottom to the top, and then draw the x graph as standard. The left hand part of the graph here that's been reflected is actually the minus x minus 7 graph. So we're going to solve minus x minus 7 equals x and rearranging this and we get x is 3.5 okay so there we are that's some some tricky questions on uh, composite functions here I've given you another tricky one here it's to do with ease and learns see how you get on try this one out
All right then, so the basics of this um, question here is to just remember that if we've got e of ln x, whoops, e to the power of ln x, because these two functions here are inverse functions, they cancel each other out effectively. So we're just back to x. And the same thing works for ln of e of x. Because these two functions here are inverses, they cancel each other out. So we get back to x. So when we apply g f of x, we're going to look to simplify our final answer. The first thing we're going to do is apply the f function. So that's e to the 5x. And then we're going to apply this to our g function. So the g function takes 4 times ln of the input. e to the 5x is our input. So it's going to be 4 times ln of e to the 5x. Now in this case here, all we need to do is times this value by 5 and this value by 5. And we've got our answer. So it's going to be 4 times 5x which is going to give us 20x. So this is how it can simplify nice and easy. Part B can simplify in a very similar way, but it is a little bit more tricky. The first thing we need to do is apply the g functions. So this is going to be 4 ln x. And then we're going to apply the f function. So the f function takes the input and does e to the 5 times the input. This time the input is 4 ln x. So it's going to be e to the 5 uh, times 4 ln x. Now we can definitely simplify this here, but we can't have anything that is in front of the ln. The e and the ln can't have anything in its way to simplify it down. So what we're going to do here is we're going to combine the 5 and the 4 to make a 20 to start off with. And then if you remember by the laws of logs, if you've got 20 ln x, this is equivalent to ln of x to the power of 20. Remember, if you've got a factor at the front, you can bring it in as a indice into the ln. So in this case here, we're going to have e to the ln of x to the power of 20. Now we can simplify and now we can cancel out the e's and the ln's. So now that nothing is in the way of the e and the ln, we can write this now as the simplified answer of x over 20. Okay then, so your turn to have a go at some of the questions from exercise 2c. Make sure you have a go at the uh, modulus type questions, that's a favourite of the exam board, and the e type questions as well. They're always simplified down when you're doing a composite function type question. Okay, do persevere through those difficult ones and ask your teacher for help if you need any. Thanks very much for watching.